Divine truths frequently ask questions. Jesus, Mary and others provide answers to questions that are frequently asked by members of the media and the public. What difference does it make to a child if the parents are not soulmates, or they are? And if they are not soulmates, then considering the child's happiness, what is the best way to handle the situation? Okay, so, so it's a pretty involved question, this, but let's, let's, uh, let's look at its particular aspects. Let, we're assuming that the parents, the two parents, and remember, they're not parents. <laughs> they're only brothers and sisters of this child. Um, the parents that we are calling parents, yep. if we, and we continue to use that terminology so that most people can identify it, created the two bodies of the child. And the child is God's child, for a start. Now, if the parents truly honour that, then they will realise that their parenthood is not really a parenthood of any kind. What it is, is a teaching role. It's a, it's, a, it's a role of helping the child come to understand things about its real parent. Yep. So it understands yep. that these, these two people, this couple, understand that. Now, let's say this couple is not a soulmate couple. And they realise in their future, after they've had children, that, oh, you're, I'm not with my soulmate. Now, if they refuse to engage the soulmate relationship after they have, uh, you know, become parents, on the idea or concept that they'd be harming their children if they engage the soulmate relationship, then all that the result will be was the child will feel like it's being sacrificed for, the child will have yeah. control of the relationship with the parents, the parents will finish up resenting the child for their inability to f fully express their soul and follow you know, what they now know or feel is their truth about their life and so forth. So it's going to cause huge amounts of damage if the parents act out of harmony with love. If the parents act in harmony with love, all it will do was add to the child's life. The child will now have four teachers instead mm. of two, <laughs> yep. right? And those teachers are more in harmony with God's laws and principles because they're more in harmony with the connection of their own soul. So the child will feel more harmony with its own creator, God, as a result. So there will be no damage whatsoever. In fact, there would only be an enhancement of the child's life and experience through the engagement of the process. Does that make sense? Yep. So again, it depends completely upon whether the parents act in harmony with love or not. Now, if one or more parents act out of harmony with love or the soulmates of those parents act out of harmony with love, of course, the damage will be quite considerable upon the child. It just depends on whether you act in harmony with love or not. If you act in mm -hmm. harmony with love, you will never go wrong. You can never go wrong. Yep. There can never be a damaging outcome if you act in harmony with love. It's impossible for such a thing to occur if you act in harmony with love. And this is where we don't trust love, you see. Yep. And I would suggest that any parents who decide to stay together for the sake of their children are not trusting love. They're not trusting the results of a lack of love and what that will also yep. put onto the child. All right? So obviously if two parents don't, if the parents don't love each other anymore and they're staying together for the sake of the child then they're teaching the child a lot of things, negative things about love, right? Mm. Without realising it. The child is going to have a lot of misunderstandings about love when it grows up, right? Now, if the parents engage love on all occasions, then what can the child learn but what love what does love yep. and the beauty and outcome and happiness that results from what love does? It can't learn anything negative as a result. So any person that says that, you know, learning like it's a nightmare that you learn who your soulmate is when you're married, I can't agree. It's a beautiful thing that you learn who your soulmate is, mm -hmm. even if the person you're married to isn't your soulmate, because you'll be engaging your soul more, you'll be loving yourself more, you'll be loving your other half of your soul more, you'll be demonstrating to any children in the relationship what, what soulmate love is, you you, and you'd still treat your partner, the your first partner, who is the mother or father of the child, you, you would still treat them with complete love, not with resentment. 
you would be honouring them, you would be respecting them, you'd have integrity with them, you wouldn't go off and have a sexual relationship with someone else without first terminating that relationship sexually and going through that process. You would, you would work your way through all of the issues with sincerity and love. Yep. And if you did that, the only result on the child would be positive. But if you don't do that and you choose to make decisions that are out of harmony with love with either the other parent or with your soulmate or with the soulmate of the other parent, now you're teaching your child a heap of things that are out of harmony with love. And of course that will definitely have a detrimental effect on the child. Yep. And so it really gets down to what our choices are as parents as to whether the detrimental effect will occur with the child. The reality is a child it will not ever be negatively affected by the breakup of a parent of parents if the parents love each other and demonstrate this love for each other still. Right? But if the parents treat each other badly and do not any longer demonstrate love for each other, the child will be very severely negatively affected by any breakup of the family that they had yeah. grown up in. And so it, what we've got to start seeing is that relationships can come and go. And until we have a relationship with our soulmate, we may enter many relationships that will come and go in the course of our life, yep. right? As a result of different emotional injuries that we have and as a result of not opening our soul to our soulmate and so forth. And it's not that that will cause damage to our child. It's being unloving that will cause damage to our child. Yep. Right? Any time we choose to be unloving to any person in any relationship, we are automatically damaging our child through our example. Yep. And I feel that once we understand that, we will no longer be so concerned about how the child is going to cope. We'd be more concerned about demonstrating love in all circumstances and situations, knowing fully that the child will not cope unless we do. The child will not cope with the situation unless we demonstrate love. Yep. The child will have emotional, psychological damage unless we demonstrate love in mm. every single situation. Yep. And that includes in any kind of relationship change. Yep. Mm. Cool. So good question. That was a good question. Okay, well, that brings us to the end of the questions for series one at least, doesn't yes. it? Yep. yep. So um, what we'll do is we'll probably get together another three or four weeks and do a series two and so forth of, the, of other questions. Hopefully for people who are listening, that, that would be beneficial for them with their um, parenting, if we can call it parenting. Parenting. <laughs> um, because really it's just bringing up a, a, a beautiful gift of a child of God and attracting yeah. it into your family and having the benefit of that child in your family to learn a lot of lessons about love. And, uh, and I feel that um, our future discussions, if we constantly refer to that, it will help people with regard to their questions about being parents and children. It will help them greatly in terms of understanding you know, how to act in, in situations, I feel.